Welcome back to the studio. If it's your first time with us, we're happy to have you. Today is an exciting day. We have a kiln unloading, we have an online store announcement, and results of the giveaway. So let's get to it. This is kiln unloading number six. Technically it's like seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean nine since number five, but the one I'm showing you, number six. I don't know what I want to show you first. Maybe the mugs. The new agateware mugs with handles. Oh yeah. Think of that. Nice little three-fingered handle. Could be four if you got tiny hands. My hands aren't the biggest. I can fit almost four in there, but three with the pinky below. It's got the swirled bottom. It's pretty dark here. That's better. This has turquoise in it. This is all, this is actually a cone five porcelain, turns out. Turns out my old clay body does not fire well the cone six. We'll get to that in a moment. There's also another green one. So the handle is unglazed. It's only glazed in these two spots. Just to make sure it stays. And then the inside is obviously glazed. Nice white liner glaze. For the outside, I sand it after it's, after it's dry. And I also wet sand it after it's done. This needs to get wet sanded first, and then it will be the smoothest clay you've ever felt. I think. Okay, here's the other color. Um, this is kind of a, like a Robin's egg blue. I forgot the actual mason stain color. I kind of went for cool colors with the mugs. So it's mostly straight, a little bit of a bow for some, angled at the bottom, a nice tall foot. And all of the bottoms actually have this cool swirl because of how the clay starts. And so if you are a fan of nice feet for your pottery, then these are for you. I feel like if you have the time and if you want to add another facet to your work, having a cool foot can be a nice addition. So they're mostly the same. I got um, some of these warped and so those won't be available. They're not good enough. I don't believe in second sales, at least right now in my life. So I'm not going to be selling work that isn't good enough. I'm pushing this clay to the limit. It's a translucent porcelain. So at its temperature, it wants to just... But I'll figure it out. So we got two more greens, two more blues. Got a thumbnail. Yeah, so you can see this one warped a little bit. It's probably just too thin, and then the handle is what pulls it. I've never experienced warping before in my pottery because I've never been working with such a a fluid melting clay body. You can see there's kind of a sheen to this clay. There's no glaze on here. Completely raw, but because it's a translucent porcelain, um, sometimes those clay bodies when fired to temperature are almost their own glaze. I've seen ones that are like glossy when fired. I love the foot though. Look at that. All right, moving on. So we have one, two, three, four. Five mugs. This is a test from last week, I figured I'd show you. A little one-fingered handle. Actually, let me ask you this. Got a preference? Visually, I love this. And also, functionally, I also love this. But I don't know. I feel like people prefer bigger handles. Like, for more fingers. Am I wrong? Am I right? This just looks so pretty, doesn't it? I don't know. All right. More agateware. And, oh, this one's good too. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. We'll have six mugs for sale. This one has a little bit more of a, like a messy pattern. Sometimes if I throw a little bit thinner or if it, I don't know, if I just center differently, um, I'm slowly learning all the intricacies of how the agateware and the marbled um, clay gets distributed in the piece. But this one you can see is more spread out. Like this one looks very neat. You can almost see the stripes of how it starts, right? Versus this one, a little more chaotic. Ooh, this one's, yeah, nice. I just love, I, f I got a good glaze I found for the inside. I mixed it myself. If you want the recipe, let me know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six mugs. Now we have tumblers and cups. I did some twisted tumblers and I did some straight ones. Oh, you know what? Pause. It's been over a month since the kiln unloading video. 
I have a 30 second montage for you if you want to find out what's been happening behind the scenes. It's been quite stressful. Here it is. As I was frying the final glaze for the Etsy shop, it wouldn't reach temperature. I tried a second frying the next day for longer, it still wouldn't reach temperature. But for new elements, installed them, only two turned on. Traced the voltage, found out I needed a new plug. Ordered a new plug, they sent the wrong plug. Finally, I got the correct plug. Meanwhile, I fired them at school with other kids' projects in order to fill a kiln. The kiln fired to a solid cone 6, overfired the work, causing bubbling and warping. And the glaze looked awful. Thankfully, since the new plug has been in, all four elements work, and I've had five great firings since. And at first glance, you might not notice, but this is not quality work. It is not work you want to put out into the world. And it was extremely defeating. And the glazing on the inside didn't look very good either. So what do you do when you overfire an entire batch of your work? You either quit or you bounce back and make it all again. And that's what I did. And honestly, I'm kind of glad that I did because I came up with a better handled design than I would have. And uh, I've learned to be more cautious. And I've always been cautious in the world of clay. But I've learned to be more cautious about firing my pottery. This was the handle I was going to put out into the world. I kind of like it. It's like a two-fingered handle. It kind of reminds me of an ear, which is weird, looking back. And the black ones, I had like black handles, which was kind of a cool thing. I had black handles planned. Um, they're very ergonomical, or they're or very ergonomical. They're comfortable for two fingers. And like a little curve here for your finger to rest. But if you look closely, I don't know if you can see it here, I'll do a close-up. There are bubbles. Can you see them? Yeah, in the black you can see the bubbles. And that's just not what you want to put out into the world. The tumblers are the same. They're very nice. I actually posted a photo of this one. That clay. It bubbles. Last thing, skip ahead if you want to, but the chemistry behind why clay bubbles when it overfires, um, there, there are gases that are being released through the pores of the clay as it gets fired. Um, you know, and every clay has a firing temperature because it's how it's designed or mixed to fire. You know, a low fire clay matures at 05, 04, and a high fire clay or mid range, you know, matures at cone 6 or cone 10. When it matures, the clay body tightens, it vitrifies, and it closes itself off. You know, porcelain is the hardest, most dense, most vitrified, which is why it absorbs way less water, which is why toilets are made of porcelain. Can you imagine if you're like red earthenware? Can you imagine if you had a toilet made out of like red earthenware? This absorbed all of the nice smells and fumes of your toilet. Um, so a porcelain like this, you know, if it's supposed to go to cone five, at cone five, it vitrified, it sealed off. And so, you know, for another cone, gases were trying to escape because the clay body was closed off, they couldn't escape. And that's what leads to bubbling. But again, either give up or bounce back. I chose to bounce back. Let's move on. I wanted to do orange again, but I was out of orange, or I didn't have enough orange, so I mixed orange with yellow. Here's one of them. So it's orange, yellow, black, and white. It's a straight cup or a tumbler, really. It's about five and a half inches tall. You can see on the bottom, I think that's like the best part of these pieces, is the foot is its own surprise. Here are some more orange, here's another orange yellow. A little more straight, I more prefer this form. Just simple and straight, nice little raised foot. This one got a lot of yellow. I personally love this one, this one's great. Little foot there. I'm gonna zoom this a little bit, just a little bit. What's nice too, everybody, is that when you have a nice vitrified clay body that's fired to maturity, Get a nice ring to it. So this one, same same setup, but there's just less yellow. There's hints of it, little streaks of yellow. It's mostly orange and black. Got a little bit more mixed up. I might not sell this one. This is more of what I prefer. It's about five and three quarters tall. So here's the, the orange family. All right, goes there. And we have red, because red was part of the last kiln. We've got three reds here. I think I failed on one. Um, we got two straight reds. These are more cup shape, cup, cup, uh, cup size. Here's one of them. 
I love the foot. Look at that. Cosmic red foot. The red ones have longer, cleaner pulls, I think. Well, one of these was an IGTV video that I made. There's one. Second one. So you can see at the top here, for example, probably where it got um, pulled extra or more or a little bit thinner. Or maybe that part was on the outside as I coned or I lost a little bit. Either way, that's what that... It makes it a little bit more scattered. Which I'm not against. It's just a little bit different. And there's that foot. Love that foot. One twisted red tumbler. I love the size and shape of this. This is why. This is honestly what I expect when I make it. These swirls go all the way to the top, uninterrupted. With JF, I can see it on there. It's there. Yeah. So, here's the red family for the giveaway or for the sale. All right, and then, oh yeah, I got these two. Now I'm still working, if those of you that want to buy Narakomi work, uh, please be patient. I'm almost there. Um, I have maybe five mugs in the works that I'm actually okay with. Um, uh, I mean, I'm very happy with them, but I'm, I'm okay with eventually selling them. Assuming they turn out right. So I'm working on those still. But I have uh, this from, this is one of the last yellow lightning pieces. It's a tall Pilsner glass. It's got the white cloud on the top to go with the lightning. White liner. JF bottom. So this might be for sale. And this is a newer block that I have. Oh, hi. Um, give me a break. My dog is barking. Hold on. Okay, now, and this is a different Narakomi block I've been working with, a different process. There are blues and blacks in here. Might be hard to see. Yeah, it's hard to see. I think the bottom looks great. But there's like blue, blacks, and grays in here, and the values are just so close, they blend together. But the cloud turned out wonderful. The liner is nice. Oh, and then I have, you know, I have one more thing in here. A solid cone five. So I fired a cone five now. And I actually just mixed seven different versions, um, like variations of my clay body. To try to get it to cone six, just because recipes are mostly in cone six. Commercial is five, six, but most recipes I find online are cone six. So I've been adding more silica, adding different fluxes. I have seven batches. I'll show you a clip. Anyway, I have uh, one more thing to show you. Oh, these turned out great. All right, coasters. Who wants some coasters? I don't know the price for these, but they'll be a lot cheaper than a mug, that's for sure. And I'll probably sell them in sets. Sets of uh, four, maybe maybe two different kinds together. I love this. This is all unglazed. Um, those of you that want to get some coasters, I did a test with these fired to maturity. I put some coffee on them. I actually have a white one that I made. I put coffee on it, left it out in the sun to dry, to stick to it. It wiped right off like this because this porcelain is um, like a translucent porcelain that's so vitrified and, and fluxed out there's probably zero absorption with this clay body so there's a coaster here's a coaster look familiar oh yeah who wouldn't want a coaster for this all right, this is a, a new style in the works. So I made a coaster for, they're kind of like tests, but also coasters. So here's a coaster for a new clay block I've been working with, more like flames. Then we have uh, a red one to go along with the tumblers. Another lightning one. And I did fire a couple beforehand. Yeah, I fired these beforehand. Here are some other coasters for you. So it's kind of random what you get. And so if I do sell these, I think I will give you little um, clear rubber stickies for the bottom. And you can choose what side you want. I don't want to stick them on there and you go, oh darn, I really wanted, you know, uh, he put the things on this side. I really wanted them on this side. So if I do sell these coasters, they'll come with 
um, three or four little clear bumpers to go on the bottom. I think I'll sell one set of coasters if you're interested. Please don't drop them, Jim. Please don't drop them, Jim. So these four I think will be a set. I mean, these, these are okay. This is a nice coaster by itself. I just, I don't believe in odd numbers. Well, actually odd numbers are the best thing for art, but coaster sets should be even numbers. I don't know. Whew. I got auto ISO. Where's auto, 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 auto. Really? Manual mode? Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are the pieces. We got six mugs. Six tumblers and six mugs, all with the agateware marbled look, all with the colored porcelain, marbled clay, agateware. Maybe. I don't think so. I think I have actually have a trade for this. Maybe. Maybe the Nerokomi in there. You'll have to see. Real quick, I wanted to clarify, this video was shot at two different times. One was a month ago and one was now. Fast forward a week and I tried uploading all these pieces to my Etsy shop and the account was deactivated. I have no idea why reach out to customer service and it's terrible and they still haven't gotten back to me three weeks later. So I went with Wix, used my professional domain, and now I have a site. Honestly, it was a blessing in disguise. The site is jimfazio.com. That's my full name in case you didn't know. It will be the feature site of all my sales and more. Eventually there'll be things like maybe a YouTube blog or links to the Instagram or some running images and videos of how I make my work. But for now, it's just the shop, jimfazio.com. Check it out. Feel free to share it with somebody. Hopefully you get a piece that you want, and if not, I promise there will be more work in the future. The sale goes live on Friday, June 12th at noon, Central Time, Chicago Time. So wherever you are, California, Maine, figure that out. Noon, Chicago Time, sale goes live. Also, I'm not going to pretend that nothing is happening in our country right now. I support Black Lives, and I stand for Black Lives Matter. A small way that I can contribute to make a difference is donating half of my sales to the SPL Center which is the Southern Poverty Law Center. They do a lot of great work, fighting hate, teaching tolerance, seeking injustice. Check it out if you want to. Understand that if you buy some of my work, half of those sales will go to the SPL Center, splcenter.org. What's happening now is long overdue, and we have a long road ahead of us. We'll never be done, but change needs to happen. So let's get back to the kiln unloading. There may be more things on there than what's here. I have some pieces laying around that I think are good enough to sell. I'm also quarantined with a toddler and a six week old. And so I'm gonna get the work shipped to you as fast as I can. It's my first rodeo. You know, they say it's not my first rodeo, it's my first rodeo. I already have boxes, I already have packaging. Um, I've looked into shipping as well. And so I have the stuff, but if you buy something, it might take me a week to get it out shipped. Please be patient. And once this first round is through, I'll be a lot better getting work out quicker for sales. I also wanna say I appreciate every single one of you. I love making these videos. I love making pottery. I love sharing it with all of you. So thank you for being here. It really means a lot to me. And thanks for hanging in there while I've been gone for a month. You know, sometimes you have to just live your life. And uh, while YouTube is, on, is high on my list, uh, my family is my first priority. So, all right. On to the giveaway. Okay, now, if you saw the last giveaway, you know that I like to have some fun with the giveaway. Last time I mixed everything up and then I threw with it. So this time, I have a list of all of your top three choices. Some of you only give me one choice, so I'm hoping you get your choice first if I pick you. Some of you didn't say anything, so I gave you a little asterisk just because you had a nice comment. I'll include you and we'll just say thanks if we call you. But uh, this is blank. This is my most loyal subscribers list. So what I did was I printed off all of your usernames and choices, taped over it with packaging tape to make it laminated, and cut them up into pieces. All right, most loyal subscribers. So seeing as how I'm kind of known as the Narakomi guy, or the colored clay guy, I think we're gonna stack these inside of a block Fold it, cut it, fold it, cut it, fold it, cut it, and then cut through with a wire tool, and we will see who we run into first. I've got some stoneware that I haven't used in a while. Wedge it up real quick. Stoneware, they should call it stiffware. 
I can hear my toddler running around upstairs. My wife is awesome and she is watching the toddler right now, so I can do this. All right, um, this is my fishing line that I use for cutting. And I recently decided to get my act together and tie some washers to the ends. So I stopped losing it. I've heard guitar strings work well, I just haven't tried it yet. So I'm gonna cut some slices and stack your pieces in here. Okay, not everybody will win, but everyone deserves to be mentioned. So, got Melatini, Kathy Seely, Barbara Dubin, Don't Pay Retail Thrift, we've got I Love Mugs, bam. Okay, we've got Lawrence Family, Do It Yourself Jim, Otter Keeper, Melissa Essenberg, Todd Girat, Girat, we've got Janet Johnson, Tahindi, who's a very loyal subscriber, always commenting. All right, Lisa Staley, Isabella Arguello, Jenny Caldwell, Lindsay Melia, Melia, Kool Aid, Nancy Elzola, Mary Carol Arazan, Arazan, I recognize that name, Braden Schaefer, Necro TV, Necro TV, Plaster Mold Video coming soon. We've got Darlene DS Designs, Karen Grondin, Grondin, probably Grondin, We've got Lori Coletto, Kyle Fleming, buddy of mine, didn't request a cup because he has a lot of them, but an asterisk, a star for Kyle. Wow. Zoom in here. Sorry I was zoomed out for all those. You heard him. We got Brittany Battaglia, former student of mine. Asterisk, no, no choices made. Appreciate that, Brittany. Noxious Jiggler 132. Caroline 202, student of mine. Wish you luck. Stasia Wisniewski Starkle. Did I say it right? Give me a thumbs up if I said it right. Another Zoo. Heather Domin. Domin. Kathy Siegelman. S oh, sorry, Kathy Seligman. I know what you're thinking right now. Um, I'm gonna mix this up. So if you're on the edge, you don't have an advantage. Shannon Rideout. Foxy B. Ben Patterson. Hear from him a lot actually recently. Gabby Jones. Hear from her a lot. Sorry if I don't recognize your name. A lot of you are frequent commenters. Bill Hall. Um, Denise C. Veer Lee Vandalay. Or Vandaley. Sandra Grenard. Grenard. Tony H. Hopefully it's Tony Hawk. Hopefully it's the real Tony Hawk wanting some pottery from me. Scott Townley. David Zeller. Student of mine. Wish you luck. Christy Vineyard. Salma Palma. Lynn Schneider. Monkey Frog. Mo Moki, sorry. Moki Frog. Bailey. Ness, Nicholas Haynes, and Megan Lawson, Lason. I don't think I missed anybody. I double, triple checked, but if I did, please let me know. I'll scroll back through. I will personally send you a gift. All right, so here's what I have. A nice Narakomi block to cut through. I'm just gonna fold it around and wedge it a couple of times. We're gonna cut through this, and the first one that I get to I'm gonna try to get it out without catching a second one. Here we go. All right. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I have the tape on here. Whew. All right, it looks like this one belongs to Janet Johnson. It's backwards. Can you see it? Janet Johnson. And that is for number three, the rainbow mug. Janet Johnson, congratulations. Stick around and you'll find out exactly how to get your mug. Congratulations, Janet Johnson. All right, we're gonna mush this back up a little bit, cut through it differently. I'm just gonna pull through and grab one. That's just as fair, I feel like. Cut through, wow, okay. My eyes are closed, I promise. I'm gonna grab this one here. Okay. Bill Hall. Congratulations, Bill Hall. Looks like you suggested 132, so we will give you number one. Here it is, sorry. Number one was this rainbow, faceted rainbow, half and half, Narakomi sedimentary rock cup. Number two was this twisted tumbler rainbow cup with a beautiful JF rainbow foot. And three was this rainbow mug. So Janet Johnson, this is your rainbow mug. Black handle. A rainbow bottom with JF. Alright, last one is for number two. I'm gonna close this back up. I'm gonna cut through a different section. Wow, a lot, a lot of a lot of entries here. Pull one at random. Here we go. 
that one. Scott Townley. Please be two first. Scott Townley, 312. So it's not your first choice, second choice, but it is a third choice. Scott Townley, winner number three. Congratulations. You are the winner of the Rainbow Twisted Tumblr. Before you go away, listen up. Winners, please email ceramicsbyjim at gmail.com and give me an address to ship your pieces to. <sighs> okay. Those of you who did not win, um, again, these mugs, these tumblers, and a few other things not shown here will be for sale, will be up for sale today. Definitely consider checking it out to support me and what I do. JimFazio.com, look for the shop section. That's pretty much all there is. There's a couple about things if you wanna read those. And then eventually there'll be maybe like a YouTube blog, some Instagram posts that are linked there. Just a way to give you a full experience of Ceramic Gym. Anyway, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.